This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine. It's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go. Please stop this disc now. 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 Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Or good night, wherever you may be listening to this. This is episode thirty-six of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. We've got. An amazing show, even if I say so myself, in store for you. Uh, my name is Tom, and I'm joined, as ever, by my faithful team of Dreamcast experts from around the globe. Uh, <laughs> I've got uh, Mr. Mike Phelan. Hello, Mike. Hello, Tom. We've got uh, Aaron the Gagaman Foster. Hey, Aaron. Hello. And uh, joining us all the way from... Ross, right, this is just a quick thing, right? Why do they call Australia down under, but they don't call Japan down under, even though they're kind of in the same place on the planet? Well, well, Japan's in the Northern Hemisphere, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Answers that question. Hello, Ross. <laughs> yes, hello. We do have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Lewis. He also goes by the uh, the tag Sonic Yoda. Lewis is uh, from the Sega fan site Sega Driven. Lewis, thank you very much for joining us. How the devil are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. No, no, thank you for taking the time out to join us. Um, this is again like a, a kind of a colliding of different Sega fan sites, and it's you know yeah, yeah. hopefully <laughs> uh, all the better for it. What we usually do is we talk about what we've picked up and what we've you know played in the last week or so since our last podcast. But I'm going to come to you first because as the uh, amazing prog rock band McFly once sang. It's all about you. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. What an introduction. <laughs> what, the prog rock bit or the fact that I mentioned it twice? <laughs> the fact that they're in the same sentence. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Lewis, Sega Driven is a, a website I'm very familiar with. Um, I can't actually remember when I was first aware of it, but it seems like one of those sites that's always been around. So can we talk a little bit about about the site and how you got started with it and that kind of thing? Yeah, okay. Um, so Sega Driven was born out of uh, closing my Sonic fan site, which was just called Sonic Yoda at the time. And I closed that around 2008, I think. Um, it was off the back of Sonic Unleashed, which I was like, this game is stinking. I'm really having a hard time <laughs> staying, staying uh, like <laughs> interested in this community. And it was a pretty toxic time for the Sonic community as well. I remember like the, the whole spiel with the guy from Sonic Cult and stuff, like him being arrested oh, yeah. and things I, it was just not a nice time to be a part of that community and i was losing interest quite rapidly yeah um, i know what you mean yeah um but like uh, sonic yoda had a sub website called Me- mega driven at the time which was basically just a uh, 16-bit stuff it's kind of like the the hardware bit on sega driven at the moment with all the consoles in and stuff and yeah just features and things on that and i really enjoyed that side of it it was basically just me sort of indulging in the retro side of the sega stuff all the stuff that i grew up with essentially um so that became the basis for sega driven um i sort of relaunched around december time because that's something you do apparently like yeah you re- you launch a website during christmas period that's a very good idea <laughs> um <laughs> and then uh yeah i've been running it since um and i think it's probably the one of the better things I've done, <laughs> like website-wise, um, I've, I'm still sort of passionate about that the Sega side of things, and very much the retro and a lot of the '90s sort of merchandise and things. I mean, I did a merchandise update this afternoon as well, actually. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, the site is one of the for me anyway. When I look on the internet for like Sega stuff, I mean, I go to the general sites like uh, Sega Bits, Sega Nerds, and also Sega Driven. So it's kind of oh, in that. Cool. No, esteemed company. Yeah, I think um, when I when I started it, I think the only one that was kind of kicking around was Sega Nerds. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like the inspiration behind it as well, because there wasn't too many sort of Sega centric websites at the time so yeah but, uh, there was also a sega shiro at that time yeah well, yeah sega shiro. Yeah. i found them a little yeah. bit later um they seem to have gone a little bit sort of inactive they had this lovely sort of like yeah. website still refresh kind of going yeah yeah they update occasionally yeah again like that was the sort of like scene at the time but now there's obviously quite a few people kicking around and yeah it's nice nice and healthy there's definitely been a uh, a surge in new sega related sites mm. in the the last couple of years i've seen anyway yeah. mm. um but I, also as well as the sega 
theatre stuff that you do and the gaming stuff, you, you're also quite kind of well known in the uh, in music circles because you, <laughs> you also run a, a blog called uh, is it UK Scum Scene? That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's um, well, like my my two big passions, I suppose, are music and games. So um, it's nice to have the the music side of things. So that yeah, um, my my friend um, uh, Catbird is uh, the DJ of the Sunday afternoon show on Total Rock, and um, okay. uh-huh. he he came up with the name UK Scum Scene like when I was in high school and he was running like a little a little website that he was trying to track like every sort of UK heavy music band that was currently active at the time and it didn't really sort of like pick up but the name always stuck with me and I asked him like if I could use it when I, uh-huh. when, I did the, when I started the website and yeah it's basically just any sort of UK centric mu- heavy music um, I'd like to cover like whether it's rock punk metal or whatever and cool. yeah it's been it's been really fun it's been really fun to do that um, and it's nice to like you know if, if games is getting me down because you know how games can be um yeah the community is a <laughs> bit of a uh, ups and downs um <laughs> and that's what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just jump over the uk scum scene and do a little bit of that for a while so it's nice to have like the the two sides of things it's good to have like a, a another interest away from yeah, games that you can kind of go absolutely. to definitely i certainly uh, recommend that. i mean for me mine's running so yeah yeah I, I noticed, you're, you're, you're a big fitness dude <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for giving us a bit of a history of your, like you know, background with Sega yeah, websites no and stuff, uh, Lewis. Um, yeah, so that's uh, UK Scum Scene, not to be confused with uh, Scum VM, which is the uh, Dreamcast emulator. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, uh, thanks for that, Lewis. Uh, Easily let's go. done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, let's go around the table and talk a little bit about things that we may have picked up since our last podcast. Uh, I'm going to come to you first, Aaron. What have you played or bought in the last week or so? Not a lot, to be honest. Uh, mainly just today, I've been playing a few random Dreamcast racing games just to be prepared for this. Ch- just trying to confirm a couple things for my list kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I actually ended up... Do, do you remember an old Dreamcast Junkyard uh, video I did years back when I had a rummage refuse for a game called Zuza Vaza? Yes, yes I do, yeah, yeah. I've been, I was playing quite a bit of that earlier, just before the podcast, because the, the mode in that where you get weapons is actually really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's a good take on the chariot racing kind of genre, isn't it? Chariot yeah, racing. Yeah, yeah, it's like... It's like pod racing, but weirder, much weirder. <laughs> and, and the combat is just ridiculous because it's just like lasers and flamethrowers and bullets just flying in every conceivable angle. And I'm going to stop you right mad. there. I'm going to stop you right there because we're going to get onto this in the the main part of the, the podcast. Yeah, but yeah. Um, cool. I'll move on. I'm going to come to you next, Mike. What have you been playing or picked up? Uh, so I haven't been playing a huge amount apart from uh, the same subject we're going to talk about later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have picked up uh, a bit of a bargain this week. I picked up the Sakura Wars complete box oh, cool. on Dreamcast, which is something which I've been after for a while. Uh, usually goes for a fair bit of money. Um, one was reduced to £20. I thought, yeah, I got them. Is that all of the Sakura, Sakura Wars, Wars then? It's, it's a complete box. So it's a complete box set. Yeah. So it's uh, the 10 different discs in there. Um, hey, me. Which means I think wow. I've only got, I've got two more... Fifty p a disc, that is. It's not. Well, no, it's not. I think. Pound, two no, pounds, wait. Two pounds pound a disc. <laughs> <laughs> not, not maths isn't your strong point, is it? <laughs> no, 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 that's no, fine. No. I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I had to think about that as soon as it came out of my mouth. I was like, uh... <laughs> it's a bit of a bargain. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, which good to get. Anything on current gen? Um, I haven't I haven't bought anything at all this week. I've still been playing Lego Force Awakens, which my six-year-old nephew has actually finished the game before I have, which I'm not entirely <laughs> sure I'm happy about. But <laughs> How dare you? Okay, uh, we'll come to you next, Ross. Uh, before we talk about what you've been playing, Ross, should we explain to the girls and boys why you, your voice was almost inaudible on the uh, on the fighting podcast? Because uh, my um, snowball microphone wasn't working and I had to use uh, this crappy cheap the, the real reason why you were <laughs> well yeah at, at the time i thought Whoa. my snowball wasn't working um and then i i, I looked on youtube and i was like why is it not working because the red light was coming up but just couldn't get it to record anything and i looked on youtube like oh, it looks like a fix for snowball malfunction and this guy had actually made a youtube video of him doing it and he was like oh i did this once what i did is i the connector in the back of the snowball x and he put it in upside down <laughs> and he, he actually made a video like oh look this is how you fix it you pull it out turn it upside down <laughs> turn it right way around and put it back in again so yeah oh god i did that Brilliant. and uh then it's fine but yeah, the the connection it, it, the size of the the connection is is such that you shouldn't be able to put it in 
the wrong way around, but you can, like, and it still fits in nicely. Yeah, I, I've so. got one of these as well, and even though I've never put it in the wrong way round, I could see how that could happen because, yeah, the mm-hmm. port in the back is too big. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I just wanted to clear that up for people who kept sending me messages saying they could hardly hear us. I'm like, uh, I've done as much as I can <laughs> with the gain and tried to put it. Up. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, uh, stupidity aside, what have you been, uh, been playing? <laughs> um, well, actually, I, I got a chance to play a bit of. Um, the Vive today. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, my um, a friend nearby, he ordered one from America and he downloaded um, most of the games that are available today and we were just trying them all out and, yeah, it was it was pretty amazing to be honest. So I played um, PSVR before and that's just like sit-down VR and it was great. But this, like, the games weren't didn't seem as big, like, high budget as, as some of the stuff I've seen on PSVR they were all like low budget mini games, indie stuff. Yeah, but a lot the, of early like, access and that. Yeah. Extra dimension, like added by the ability to like move around in a three D space, was pretty uh, yeah unreal. Yeah, the motion controls look really interesting on that thing. It kind of feels like what the Wii was. They wanted the Wii to be, but they oh, didn't yeah, have like the technology you, you at watch... the time. It's like this. What, what was it is that game? Now. Um, something Red Red Steel was it? Oh, with the swords. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember yeah. seeing the videos, like the first yeah. Wii videos of that, and it looked so awesome? And like the the video they showed the guy playing it, and they made it look <laughs> like it was one to one movement yeah, when really exactly. it was nothing like that. But yeah, this is this is what <laughs> <laughs> what the Wii was promising, like. 10 years ago or whatever like it's actually here now cool and have you played anything on the on the dreamcast uh yeah i was playing a lot of uh racing games today in preparation for this podcast uh i thought i should try some of the like other games or less known games i haven't tried um needless to say um after playing them my choices haven't changed uh, so <laughs> yeah, most of them weren't that great then should go then should go was pretty fun though so i hadn't played that yeah. before have you got the controller for that yeah i've got the train hey. controller yeah. I think once, so. once again once again i'm gonna i'm gonna stop you there because we'll, we'll come to this in the actual main part of the uh, podcast we're gonna move to you lewis i'm gonna ask what have you been playing do you play on your Dreamcast? yeah yeah you? absolutely um I, I mean i got mine a little bit sort of near the end of its lifespan i think about got it in 2002 so um, okay, but yeah. uh, amassed a little bit of a collection with it. Um, the things I've been recently picking up um, are... Do you remember when we were at Doncaster, there was that Sega Mags uh, stall? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, course, yeah. He really sort of like spurred me on to get some old magazines and stuff. And I never owned any of the Dreamcast magazines. And I love demos. Like I'm obsessed with the PS1 demo discs because I love all the uh, Net Your Rosy games. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, never had any Dreamcast ones. So I picked up a handful and... Um, the thing that's really sort of stuck out on me, and I really want to get it now, is um, I played the demo for Sega Extreme Sports, and that's oh, yes. a really yeah. like well realized series of sports. Like I, I didn't think that they'd all be very enjoyable. I thought some of them would fall down a little bit, but like that that whole sort of like relay heat where you're like bit of an ATV, bit of a skiing or whatever it is. I was just like, yeah, this is really cool. I really like this. <laughs> so yeah, again, it looks really good as well. The hang gliding was completely broken, but all the other events mm-hmm. were pretty yeah. good. No, it's just one of those things I hadn't really got around to. And again, demo disc saving the day. I love the fact that you can just check something out that you wouldn't normally go and have a look at and find something interesting like mm. that. So that was really fun. Um, and then recent, um, I've, I bought uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2 on PS4 because I really like the first one on 3DS. And yeah, it seemed more like a more horror-esque. So uh, yeah, I've been enjoying that quite a lot. It's nice and snappy. Did you play Resident Evil 7, the demo? I don't have PS Plus, so um, I, did, I wasn't I wasn't savvy to that, unfortunately. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for it because, you know, it's more horror. So that's that's what I want from a Resi game. So There's another horror, horror game on the, on the PS4 called, um, is it? Not faces of evil. No, it's it's like a you walk around a mansion and there's like paintings that change. I can't remember the oh, name. Oh, what's it called? Top of my head now, but um, yeah, that looks quite interesting. If anybody remembers what it is, like I would love that recommendation. So. <laughs> send us a send it us on a postcard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> PO box. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. All right. All right. Thanks for that, Lewis. Um, I'll just quickly run through what I've been doing. I've been playing a game on the PS4 called Metro Last Light Redux. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I've got that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. I loved the original on the 360. I thought it was amazing. So this is the sequel to Metro 2033. Just fantastic story-driven first-person shooter. Brilliant, brilliant game. Um, and also Darius Burst Chronicles Savior again on the Such Vita. So game. playing play the PC one myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got that. Yeah, there's so much content. It's fantastic. And uh, on the Dreamcast, the only game I've picked up since the last 
episode we did is uh, Wind and Water Puzzle Battles. Oh, good man. Great choice. Really love that game. It's such a good game. I, I'd never played it before. I mean, I'd read Aaron's um, articles from way back when, when it was first released. Mm. And so I knew of its existence. But when they re-released it like last week yeah. or the week before, I thought, I'm having that straight away. 10 euros, wasn't it, as well? Like, really cheap. Yeah, really, really good deal. And uh, the production values are, you know, stunning. It puts a lot of, like, official, air uh, quotes, games mm. to shame. You know, Doesn't I? With the uh, the intro and the music and the, the story mode and everything like that. Hoping to get um, a developer interview up on the Dreamcast Junkyard with the guy from guys from Yuan, Yuan Works. I don't know how you pronounce oh, nice. it. Oh, wicked! Uh, in the next uh, couple of uh, couple of weeks, so that should be interesting. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing on the retro and the uh, the modern consoles. But I think that's uh, enough about what we've been doing. Let's uh, let's come to our our main topic of discussion, and we'll start that after this break. Roll! Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little interlude there that I stole from YouTube. Now we're going to talk about our main topic, and that is racing games. The Dreamcast has an absolute ton of racing games. I think, apart from apart from like action adventure games, the racing genre must be the most well represented on the Dreamcast. Um, Mike, I asked you earlier about uh, how many there were, and I think you said there were fifty-five, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. So between fifty and sixty different racing games on the Dreamcast, so there's a lot to choose from. Uh, and Ross was also kind enough to uh, basically troll the internet and find every single racing game we think for the Dreamcast, and some more that you didn't agree with. <laughs> yeah, some more that when we did the um, when we did the fighting podcast and the Schmupcast, <laughs> you included things that were clearly weren't in that genre. I'm just covering all the bases. <laughs> Yep. In case someone on Reddit was like, that's not a racing game, me! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I did take a few of them out. For example, um, I didn't think uh, I didn't think Wild Metal really was classed as a racing game. No, no, to be honest, I wasn't sure if the topic was driving games or racing games, but yeah, you're right, so it's ah, racing, right. so that's not, it's not, it shouldn't count, should it, no? Oh, fair enough. I mean, you do kind of drive a tank, so technically you, you were right. I didn't really think of it in that, in that sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through a list, like we did in the other previous themed episodes, of all the different racing games on the Dreamcast. This is quite a long list, so I'm going to put a nice little music bed under this just to make it less monotonous because I know that my voice isn't the most <laughs> silky smooth to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> what are those videos where, you know, on YouTube where people like do these like audio, like audio sensory... Oh, ASMR, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm ever going to get away with that. So, uh... <laughs> Right, I'm going to begin. Okay, so the list begins thus. 4 Wheel Thunder, 4x4 Evolution, 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker, Aqua GT, Buggy Heat, or TNN Motorsports Hardcore Heat, Cat Flag to Flag, or Super Speed Racing, Crazy Taxi and Crazy Taxi 2. Again, they're more driving than racing, but I kept them in. Uh, Daytona USA 2001, Demolition Racing, no exit. Dentia de Go 2, Ducati World, Exhibition of Speed, F1 World Grand Prix 1 and 2, F1 Racing Championship, F355 Challenge, or Ferrari Challenge, uh, Hydro Thunder, Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000, Le Mans 24 Hours, Looney Tunes Space Race, Magforce Racing, Metropolis Street Racer, Monaco Grand Prix, Monaco Online, Pen Pen Tri Isolon, Pod Speed Zone, Revolt, Redline Racer or Suzuki Also Extreme Racing, uh, Ripping Riders, Cool Borders, Burn, Snow Surfers, all the same game, uh, Roadsters, Rush Rush Rally Racing, San Francisco Rush 2049, Sega GT, Sega Rally, uh, Shenmue because it contains Hang On, and uh, Shengmi 2 because apparently it contains duck races, hang on, and outrun. Snow <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Duck> Cross races. <laughs> yeah. Snowcross Racing Championship, uh, or Polaris Snowcross, South Park Rally, Speed Devils, Speed Devils Online, Spirit of Speed 1937, Star Wars Racer, uh, Stunt GP, Surf Rocket Racer, Super Runabout, Taxi 2, Test Drive 6, V Rally 2 Expert Edition, or Test Drive V Rally, Tokyo Extreme Racer 1 and 2. Tokyo Bus Guide, Tokyo Bus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna murder this. Sorry, Ross. And I Bidjin Bug Guide Tenji. Uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for approval there. Manchester Twin with Tokyo once again. Um, 
Tokyo, uh, sorry, Tokyo Racer, uh, Toy Racer, Vanishing Point, Wacky Races, Walt Disney World, Magical Quest, uh, Sega Extreme Sports, Yu Suzuki Game Works Volume 1, because again that contains Hang On, Outrun and Power Drift, Zusa Vata and Trick Style. Uh, there's a couple of other ones that you added on at the end, which are kind of racing games uh, with limited control for the player. Or no control at all, yeah. Yeah, or no control at all. Uh, An- Anima Star. I don't know, I've never heard of that one before. Anima Star, I think it is. Yeah, Anima Star. Uh, Anima yeah. Star, like Animal Master. Anima Star. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Du- uh, again, send me to Duck Races. Uh, Sonic, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 KO Races, or Chow Races, sorry. Um, Winning Post 4, Program 2000. Uh, Derby to... Uh, I'm murdering them. <laughs> Derby or... Horse racing, was it? basically. Oh, yeah. horse racing games. Cre- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Derby or two, I think it is called. Horse yeah. racing two. Or Derby <laughs> Dead School or something like that. Yeah, so that's quite the list. I mean, there's some good, really good games there and there's some utter trash as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> before... Yeah. What we're going to do here for you, the listener, is if you listen to the Shmup episode and also the fighting episode, what we did was we go around the table and we each choose, uh, first of all, our... Like our honourable mention racing game, then we choose our least favourite, and then we choose our favourite. So we end up on a high note. And uh, before we go into that and go around the table, I just wanted to ask uh, you guys uh, two questions. Really, uh, the first one is: Where do we stand on race controllers? I mean, does anybody use a steering wheel when they play yeah, racing games? Sometimes. Do you prefer? Yeah, I mean, do, do you have the official one or the third party one? I got a six, I think. Six. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm like, come I'm, on. I'm a little bit of a, a little bit of an obsessive. <laughs> no, um, I've got the one. I've got the official race wheel, the one without the pedals. Mm. Yeah, uh, and I, re- I do really like yeah, it because it's got, the, um, it's got the tension, you know, where it's got the little elastic band inside. So when you turn, it's kind of like a. It's not exactly force feedback, but it kind of gives you a bit of a, a pull in the opposite yeah. direction. It's a very light, though, isn't it? A very light controller. It doesn't have any weight to it. Is that why you got six? So you can weight. That's why I got six. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> Just stack them on top of each other. Oh, yeah. Lewis, do you, do you want to play with a race controller? I actually or just... don't. Like, um, I've always been quite... If I play games, it's always with like standard controllers. I like face buttons and things mm. like that. Um, it, so, yeah, I've never really explored um, sort of steering wheel controllers. And, and to be honest with you, I don't really have the space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm the same. The, the one game that I will say actually is enhanced by a, a racing controller, in my opinion, is... Um, Super speed racing or kart flag oh, okay. to flag. Yeah. Um, from the cool. internal from the internal viewpoint. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, obviously, you don't have that many harsh turns to take because it's all oval shaped. It's so turn white, do you? No. <laughs> so it's only got the one direction to turn in. Um, but I just thought it really added something because you feel like you you know you're actually in the cockpit with the steering wheel. It's really yeah. you know really good. The other question I wanted to ask you as well is: um, Are there any games that Sega didn't bring to the Dreamcast that you thought maybe should have had Dreamcast updates? What Dreamcast family games? <laughs> uh, anything that was like maybe on the Saturn, for example. I mean, the oh, game, yeah. the, the couple okay. of games that st- stand out for me that I would really have liked to have seen on the Dreamcast are Manx TT or Hang On, yeah. Hang On ninety five. I think, really I think the, big, the big one. For me, is uh, Scud Race. Scud Race yeah. never got a port. I, you know, I never got especially a port since to they anything. did that demo of it, that like tech demo of actually mm. porting the graphics over. It's a real shame they didn't actually go ahead and make it as a launch title. Yeah, mm. that would have been. I'd also say um, Daytona USA Two. Yes, good shout. Because yeah. I was quite disappointed that they just remade the original one again. Mm. I really wanted them to bring that version over because it's got that ridiculous level of like the devil jumps down on the track and stuff. <laughs> <It's really laughs> <Yeah>. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that's, yeah. Uh, that was a shame. You did. We did get the um, the Naomi two initial D game. We got one initial D game on uh, PS two, which I think was a combination of two of the arcade games. And then there was a separate yeah. one on PSP, which was a different arcade game. And we also got the sequel to eighteen wheel eighteen wheeler. That was was it called um, King of Route sixty six? King of Route sixty six. That's, it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that came to PS two. <laughs> that game is weird. <laughs> mm. I didn't even know there was a sequel to mm. Eighteen Wheeler. I don't know if it's like officially a sequel, but it's de- like a, definitely a spiritual. It successor. is a sequel. Oh, is it? Is it's it? got. It had a PAL release on PS two. I think. Wasn't it? Yeah, it only had PAL and US release. It didn't come out in Japan. In Japan, unfortunately. I don't know why. I was going to make a really bad joke and say I thought the sequel would be called Nineteen Wheeler. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> 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 anyway, my crap jokes aside, let's let's move on to the uh, to the main meat of our our episode this uh, this time round, and we're going to talk about our well our, our favorite and our least favorite driving games, racing games. Uh, let's begin with our our honourable mentions. 
And uh, I'm going to I'm going to start with our guest. Okay, oh, that's it. That's you, Lewis. <laughs> what's your What's your honourable mention? Which game do you really like but wouldn't consider um, your favourite? So I was tired on this one. I was I was thinking either V Rally Two or what I've gone mm. for. Uh, and what I've gone for is Buggy Heat because Ooh, I fair. really like Buggy Heat. I think oh. um, it feels like a Sega game, despite the fact that it isn't developed by a Sega studio at all. It's not in-house, I don't think. Yep. Um, that's true, it, yeah. I love off-road races as well. Like That's a big thing for me. Um, it's not. It doesn't have uh, the problem that I don't quite like with Sega Rally 2, where it's really drifty to the point that you're on like yeah. an easy <laughs> corner and you you think, oh, you know, easy right. Like, I, I shouldn't have to, like, move the, the joystick too much to, to, to compensate for that. Nope, you just drift straight into the bloody wall. Always gets on my nerves. Yeah. Um, whereas <laughs> Buggy Heat's, like, uh, handling model is really sort of tight. At the, but at the same time, it's got... There's a bit of a looseness to it to, to give it that sort of off-road feel, which I really like. Just turn off the sound effects. That's <laughs> screeching. <laughs> oh, it's horrendous. I only just recently bought yeah, this I... game, actually. And yeah, the screeching sound effects are horrendous. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me too much. I mean, it's, re- you know, the retro games, it's it's always the, it's always the way, isn't it? Sound isn't particularly high up the, the list of uh, things to deal with. But um, yeah, I, I really like Buggy Heat. I think it, it's, uh, as an arcade off-road racer, I think it really does quite well. And again, it, it feels it feels so much like a Sega arcade game. I'm surprised that it wasn't developed yeah. by Sega themselves or an in-house, you know, um, studio that they'd own. I think it's got a really interesting. Um, there's a really interesting view that it has, where you go into first person mode. And you can have I was going to say yeah. the little camera looking into the cockpit, where you can see you changing gears and doing the acceleration. I and always stuff. use a third person view, so like I haven't noticed that before. Oh, I'm going to go and play it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's real. Re- <laughs> yeah, it's like a little picture, oh, in, picture cool. in the corner, isn't it's it? Lovely little it's idea. Cool. Yeah, I like the name of the some of the cars as well. In the one called Dank Schrenker, I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> Who awesome. came up with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's some cracking names for, for vehicles in that in that game uh, yeah good choice uh, I, I'm, I'm a I'm quite a fan of the game as well. It's one of the first games I ever had for the Dreamcast. Oh, right, okay. It was a launch title, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. it was here anyway. It was um, a complete Mm. sort of chance pickup, to be honest with you. I saw it sort of cheap kicking around on eBay. Like, it's it's not... My version's incomplete. It's only got the cover and the disc. But, to be honest, I buy it to Mm. play, so I'm never too bothered about having it as complete. And, uh, yeah, it really surprised me. Really sort of of blew me away a little bit. Good choice. Good choice to kick things off. Uh, Okay, let's uh, let's move on to the next person. Aaron, I'm going to come to you next. What's your honourable mention? Okay, mine will be Le Mans. 24 hours uh, you think or test drive lands in America mm, yeah. yeah absolutely stunning game really quite blown away by it when it first came out uh, well I might have got it about a year after but like yeah is it the same game. studio that built Toka isn't it I've got that incorrect. No, it's not. It's, it feels like a Codemasters game but it's not. It's uh, Melbourne House. Oh, yeah, okay. it really does feel like a Codemasters Australian game. Australian yeah. game. Yeah, mm. yeah, it is, and it was yeah. published by was it Infogrames? Oh, that might yeah. be why. I'm yes, yeah, yeah. It is really similar to Toka, though. Toka Race Driver. It that's it feels just like a, a coded racing game. It was one of the first games I played. Sorry to cut you off there. Yeah, um, one that's of the fine. first games I saw that um, the, the visuals really are the, the standout thing for me. Yeah. I'm not really oh, too I'd keen say, on the yeah. on the handling or anything like that. But it was one of the first games I saw where the the brake discs actually glow right, within yeah. the wheel as you as I go past yeah, on the yeah. replays. I was just like, wow! <laughs> yeah, that, that wow. really stood out back then. Like, it was kind of like, you don't see that often. <laughs> well, you didn't then. You know, all these things that you take for granted now that are just in every racing game. Yeah. Like, they were slowly getting introduced around, you know, that era. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. One thing I really liked about it is how many options there are to change how you play it. Like, if you don't really want to play it realistically you can play it like more arcade like and you can like take ads like things to make it a bit easier for you or if you want to make it so every time you touch a corner you break down you can as well and of course there's you know the proper full Le Mans mode where you can have it all running in real time we, as... we don't talk about that well, do we, yeah do we might do we might <laughs> <After> <laughs> yeah after no. that little story no. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of incredible, you know, and I, I've put quite a few hours into that game. My other honourable mention would have been Sega Rally 2, but I think this has just edged it out. So, cool. For yeah. those people listening who don't know what we're talking about, Mike started the 24-hour full race on and <laughs> saved after, <laughs> after eight hours of racing, and his save didn't actually save. Yeah, that's so. the one, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was the one. Yeah. What, what, do you get? what do you get if you... If you complete the 24 hour race, does it unlock anything or do you just. A sense of satisfaction, Ross. A sense of okay. satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you for playing. And then just resets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bugger off. <laughs> Excellent. Good choice there. Good choice there, Aaron. Uh, okay, moving on. I'm uh, going to come to you next, Mike. Uh, what's your honourable mention? Um, so this was really difficult for me because I've narrowed down to 10 and I'm <laughs> going to pick... Uh, I'm a big fan of, of sports racing games, so like motorsports, um, Le Mans and, and like Formula One games. But I'm going to compete against that and pick Wacky Racers as my oh, hey. yeah. mm. no, I love it's good Wacky choice. Racers. It's so good. It's it's <laughs> the, the greatest cartoon to video game adaption I've ever seen. It's Perfect. really well done. I think one of the main outstanding things for me was, even though it looks amazing and that is a big part of yep. the appeal for me, it's that the, the size of the um, of the, the main campaign Yes, it's on a it's on a par with something like Diddy Kong Racing. That whole open world like HUD Diddy Kong, Kong is almost sort of, like something out of yeah. like a rare yeah. game or something. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, if you want, hmm. want to expand on, well, on why you chose it. It's, it. Growing up watching Wacky Racers on TV, I felt, I've played a few different Wacky Racers games, and there was there was a there was one on the Game Boy, was there? If I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and none of them really did it right. This one, first time I played it, it just you. I could just tell straight away it was the right game. You've got widescreen mode, so it looks amazing now as well. Um, mm. I know that not everyone likes to have their games stretched on their display. But it's, it, the, the black outline around characters gives like a Jet Set Radio sort of look to it as well. I think it actually beat Jet Set Radio to the punch when it comes to cell yeah. shading. Yeah, I, I think they that, added did, it yeah. like at the last minute just so they would be the first out the door to have cell shading on the Dreamcast, yeah. if I remember rightly, because when they first showed it off, it didn't have cell shading. And didn't it come out on the? Didn't it come out afterwards on a different system and didn't have? No, I'm getting confused with Fur Fighters, which came out after on the PS2 right. and had cell shading. Right. It Sorry. did come yeah. out. Uh, Racket Racer yeah, did yeah. come out on PS2, and I think they may have added some content, but yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's quite different on a PS2 or a console. I think it's the same as Le Mans, which is like the, the other versions of Le Mans. Oh, okay. Don't have anything like the same quality. Hmm. I think with 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 okay. Racers, I think it's made by Infogram, Infogram's Sheffield House, which I think is Gremlin, old Gremlin guys. Yeah, I think quite a few people that went on to uh, form Sumo Digital right. actually um, yeah. made this game. So yeah, a lot of the people that made Racky Races did uh, All Stars yeah. Racing. It's the precursor to, to Sega All Stars Racing. Case closed. Mm. <laughs> the thing is, as well, I mean, the, the one mm. thing about Wacky Races as well that stuck with me is just how um, authentic it, yeah. it is to the cartoons mm. because you've got all the kind. Of, I don't know if they're all the, the the original voice cast, but it sounds very similar. And you've also got people like you got Greg Proops in there That's as right. the uh, as the commentator. No, and if anything, and it, it's actually animated a bit better than the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hanna Barbera was never known. They for actually it, so. move. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, that's a fantastic choice. Uh, I, I'd, I'm really interested to find out what your favourite is after that. Hmm. Let's uh, move on to uh, to Ross. Ross, what's your honourable mention? Uh, yeah, my, it's a bit of a cheat because it's <laughs> like a few games in one. We've already mentioned it briefly on the list. Um, uh, Yu Suzuki Game Works. The truth. Because you know it's got Outrun, um, it's got Power Drift. And also, hang on, all of them are fantastic games, and they're the best ports on any system of those games. Like, the Sega Saturn did have a good port of Outrun, but it ran at 30 frames per second, whereas this one runs at 60. This, I think I think the same case goes for Power Drift. I think the Saturn Drift. one did actually have a cheat code that would let you unlock 60 frames. The Japanese version does, yeah. It does, yeah, but, it, but it's not by default. It, it does, but then doesn't it take... It takes some compromise. It like compromises on something else so that it can do sixty frames. I think it removes all the trackside sprites or something. It does something because otherwise, why would it not just be in there? Yeah, yeah true. Maybe the, the full authenticity of the original arcade one, maybe because like the original was thirty, so possibly. Well, anyway, it's six frames per second, but mo- mostly it's for power drift. So I, I think like not enough people have uh, oh, played definitely. this game, and it's the pinnacle of like sprite scaling games in my opinion that and galaxy force i mean not in terms of gameplay like outrun and afterburner are definitely better games but in terms of what they managed to do with the sprite scaling it like it almost it really they've they've like put so many sprites in there and done so many clever tricks but it almost looks like a 3d game uh, i don't so know really if you've played the um 3ds ports of these games but I really yeah, recommend I have, yeah. those. Yeah, they're yeah, amazing. Those, like yeah, Galaxy good. Force and Power. Oh, I haven't played Power Drift yet because it hasn't come out here yet. But <laughs> I, I do, I do have um, Power Drift on the Saturn, and I think it's a great game. I've not, I haven't played the uh, the Yusuzuki Gameworks one. Uh, there is a game though on the Turbo Graphics which is quite similar, and I can't remember what it's called for the life of me now. I think they did actually port Power Drift. Is it, is it power just Power Drift? Drift? Sure yeah. They, oh, yeah, right, they, they did. Yeah. Port yeah. There is Power yeah. Drift on okay. Turbo Graphics, but it's it's not it's not anywhere near. 
uh, arcade perfect. Uh, I think um, in the case of uh, Power Drift, the Saturn one was 30 and then the Dreamcast one was 60 as well. So, if I remember rightly. That Yusuzuki game works is really expensive now, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think I got lu- I-, I got quite lucky. I think I picked that up before it jumped in price. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually own it, but... um. I just played it on my um, my GD ROM. My, uh, what's it? Yeah, what's it called? A uh, GDMU. What's it called? Yeah? GDMU. Yeah. So I don't own it myself, but uh, yeah, I recommend anyone just download yep. it if you can't oh, afford definitely. it. It's yeah. a great game, and uh, especially Power Drift. Like the the stages, like almost resemble like roller coasters, and it's so colourful. It's just really I cool actually game. got a chance to play the cab um, because they had it at the oh, oh never... what was the bloody thing I was at Gateshead um, the the event that they had recently i'm trying to remember the bloody name of it now yeah i saw the photo um, but yeah like um, <laughs> i've never yeah no that was it thank you um yeah no really really nice to play it with like uh steering wheel and stuff it, it's a lot more responsive was it the cabinet that actually no no it was a stand-up well, one was it? Yeah, oh, yeah. it was a stand-up one. Oh, okay yeah still that's pretty cool did they have Radmobile though? Uh, well? They didn't, unfortunately. Um, uh, that was a little bit disappointing. But they did have the big wraparound three-screen uh, Ferrari F3 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 Challenge, nice. which is oh, really nice. interesting to play. Mm. I remember when those were everywhere in arcades, and now you can't find <laughs> it at all. <laughs> yeah, they had one. They had, they had one at the Trafford Centre in Namco Station. They also had one of those mm. big rigs, you know, for uh, oh, eighteen yeah, wheeler. Yeah, that was that. really cool. Yeah. Mm. yeah, they're still all over the place. Taking a step back earlier, we were talking about games that never got ported to a Dreamcast. Or I just you just remind me of one F three five five two on the Naomi. I, I've never even seen one in real life. I, they can't have made. They can't have made them in. Was it just like an expansion that large or numbers? But. It never got a port to anything. No, I, I think it's new tracks oh, and everything. I think okay. so. I, I, I don't know much about it, to be honest. But I, I, I new tracks think, I don't still think just one just car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely still just one car, I think. There you but. go, listeners. If you if you, you can remember which was the uh, the name of the PlayStation 4 game with the paintings that move and also the tracks <laughs> for F55, put that at the bottom <laughs> of the postcard when you send it in and we'll, uh, we'll have a look. <laughs> Cool, okay. P.O. Moving Box 9999. <laughs> yeah, uh, moving on. Uh, my choice for honourable mention, it, I have to admit, it's probably the same as you guys, this is really tough because there's that many yeah, decent, yeah. really good racing games on the Dreamcast. Yeah. I've gone for Hydro Thunder. Oh, good choice. Uh, yeah. uh, excellent. Now, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good game. Yeah. When I got my Dreamcast right in the, very, in the very early days, that was a game that I picked up randomly and I just played the hell out of it because it was amazing. It was just like, it just looks so so good yeah. and play so well and mm. as an, a pure arcade experience it's hard to beat yeah. you know mm. um obviously there's not that much longevity to it because you basically just race like from point a to point b and you know pick up the uh the, the turbos as you go around the track and if you get if you miss one you're like oh god that's yeah. it i'm screwed now yeah um, definitely so you basically just have to hold down it's the really boost hard. button. yeah <laughs> certainly the later tracks are definitely but yeah. um, just the whole like bombastic in your face like Three, two, one, <laughs> yeah. go, go, go! Oh, Fire the cool. torpedoes! Yeah, you know, it's just like... You're it's... crazy! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a stupid throwaway game that just showed off how much of a leap ahead it's of, like... the, the most midway, midway game I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's up there with, like, Total Carnage is, like, one of the most midway-ass midway games. It's outrageous, you know. It's... That's what I miss about midway, yeah. <laughs> it was part of other systems, but I don't think either the PS1 or the N64 versions look or play anywhere near as good as the There's DS2. PS2 version as well because it's a part of Midway Arcade Point Three. Three. Yes. Three. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, and that's mm. actually a little bit disappointing. I think the Dreamcast version is the best version. That's going. right. It um, was on yeah. Xbox 360 Live. Got a yeah. Release. Yeah. It was on Xbox Live as well. The PS1 version was handled by a completely different team, and even though it's got the same tracks and everything, it plays really differently. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's like a so they had to rebuild it or something. <laughs> it's like a weird analog of uh, Hydro Thunder made by someone who's never played it but watched a video of Hydro <laughs> Thunder being played. If, wow. if, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Was that by Eurocom? Or no, it was like by that? a completely oh, different team. It's on the shelf over oh, there. Yeah. I can see it from here, but I'm, it's too far away for me to grab, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, <laughs> Courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That's my choice. Uh, Hydro Thunder. Great sequel as well, Tom. A sequel to Hydro Thunder on the 360. Hydro Thunder Hurricane. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing game. And then there was that spiritual sequel in arcades, wasn't there? Um, H2 Overdrive. I've not, I'm not familiar with that, that, one. that one. Yeah, that's that's pretty good as well. Yeah, awesome. Arcade only, but yeah, it's like Raw Thrills. Brilliant. Interesting, mm. interesting stuff. Okay, guys, that's uh, that'll bring us to the end of our first round, and uh, we'll come back after this brief interlude <laughs> and talk about our <laughs> least favourite racing games. <laughs> I am looking yeah. forward to this. Oh, 
Okay, welcome back to episode 36 of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. We're talking about racing games, and in this section, we're going to talk about our least favourite examples of the uh, the genre. Let's uh, let's jump straight in. I'm going to come back to you again, Lewis, for your least favourite. Right. Let's uh, let's have it. Okay. Spirit of Speed 1937. Straight out. Excellent choice. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah. What a stinker. Um, Knew it would come up. <laughs> Didn't take long. Um, it's annoying as well because, like, I remember. So I, me and my family often have sort of like days out at um, Brooklyn's racetrack uh, because they do like uh, uh, different events. They'll have like uh, an Italian day where they'll have, you know, like everybody brings all the Ferrari collectors come down and stuff. All the Lancia's collectors come down and they show off their cars. And that's always really good fun. I've, I've always loved going to Brooklyn's and things. And that made me aware of Spirit of Speed 1937 because there's a, a recreation of the original Brooklyn's track because nowadays you know, the, the, the Brooklyn's racetrack is all cut up and things because they had to bury certain parts of it because it was uh, it was all sort of white concrete and it was visible yeah. via yeah. the air so during wartime they had to break up the track and bury it under mud and stuff and it destroyed loads of it and now it's not it's incomplete that's quite interesting so spirit of speed 937 yeah. has a complete recreation of the original track and the original circuit layout and things which was mm. exciting in my head but in practice this is the most <laughs> boring <laughs> racing game because it's it's all obviously you know retro cars and things and it n- none of them can break within like 30 miles an hour so it's just dull <laughs> like why would you bother like making a racing game so boring I, I, yeah. and it's all this weird half hybrid between sort of like a simulation and an arcade game it's trying its hardest to be somewhat entertaining but at the same time because it's so fast and <laughs> slow it's just like really can't be asked <laughs> like to bother, bother with this such a shame it is and uh, one of the other things about the game is that it's just inherently broken like from, yeah. the, from the get-go i mean when when you first put it in and, and, you, and you start playing it and you've got all this kind of like 1920s music and this aesthetic of like art yeah, deco yeah. you know uh, mm. menus and you think that stuff's really nice yeah this is really yeah. cool you know you've got this like trumpet like glenn miller style music and mm. you know and you think oh i've got these like all these like licensed cars all these like alpha uh, alfa romeos and bugattis from like the era that the game is from yeah. uh, like like you say lewis all the authentic racetracks and then when you actually start playing it and and you're just like this is this is this yeah, is yeah. bad, yeah. very bad. What's what's gone wrong? One of the one of the most telling things that I saw when I, I recently actually featured this in a it was a top ten worst games on the Dreamcast for the for the Dreamcast Junkyard. And um, one of the things that I noticed when I was actually playing this game was when you're racing against you know if you've got like one other adversary on the track, they will like speed off into the distance because they don't actually need to adhere to like the rules of you know <laughs> physics or anything like that they, they just kind of fly off into the distance and you're kind of languishing <laughs> at like 20 miles an hour behind them but you can still see the tr- the the tire marks on the track of the cars of the other cars so when they get to a corner because they're going too fast and the game engine isn't designed for them to break that well they just kind of smash off the corners <laughs> spin around and carry on <laughs> And you can see the tire tracks at every corner oh of the cars. You can see them in the like, circle. Of <laughs> yeah. Bits. Oh my god! So, and at one point, I caught... you can tell they're cheating. At one point, I actually caught up to the one of the other cars. Oh, you lapped me or something? It just happened to be at a corner. It smashed into the corner, yeah. spun around, and it carried off into the distance like that. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so try it yourself, folks. Get lapped on Spirit of Speed and watch the uh, hilarity unfold. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, quite special in how terrible it is. <laughs> it is, yeah. No, uh, is there anything else you, you want no, to add? No, not particularly. It just don't, just don't experience it. <laughs> <laughs> don't even it's bother. like it's one of those things. Like when people talk about, oh, you know, this modern game or whatever that came out in like 2015 or whatever is a bad game. Generally, like most modern games released, you know, in boxes um, are mediocre at best. They're not bad. Mm. When you play something like this, it totally gives you the experience of what is actually a bad game. <laughs> this is like mm. the yardstick yep. that you should use for bad games. What made me <laughs> laugh as well? What made me laugh as well with that game is how it was made by Acclaim, but in America they just thought, you know what? Let's just pull out that old LJN uh, yeah. brand just one last time for the first <laughs> time in Yonks. Just let's just slap that on there just yes. to warn They've people. Got such a great it's like they warned people by putting that on there. <laughs> I mean, when it came out in the UK, it was just acclaim, and for some reason, this game came out in Japan as well. <laughs> Mike, didn't you have some fact about yeah. it? Like a few episodes ago, it sold yeah. like eighty-seven 36. copies or something. <laughs> Thirty-six <laughs> copies in Japan. Yeah, that's, <laughs> wow. That's what. Yeah. I've got the um, 
the Japanese the book that oh, this yeah. says only selling thirty six yeah. copies. Have you got or the game, Ross? Japanese version. And I've got the game. Oh, it's it's, one of, it cannot be that rare. It cannot be. It can, <laughs> it no, it cannot be. It it. Limited it, edition. I, I got it for like. 2,000 or 3,000 yen. It wasn't a cheap game, but well, unless there really are only 36 copies, but it's just so bad that you can't pay someone to but take I think it. it was it was 36 sold at full price, wasn't it? So they probably shipped loads into a container. What you should do, Ross, is you should like launch some kind of campaign on social media to unite all the other people. Who got <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> a bit like that one that was done for Shaq Fu, where they got like, all the, lo- as many copies yeah. of Shaq Fu together as they could. You should do that with Spirit of Speed. What, and destroyed them? <laughs> 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 Excellent. Let's move on from Spirit of Speed Night. So I'm sure this game's going to come up again as we go around the table. But let's uh, let's move on to uh, Aaron. So my one is Walt Disney World Quest Magical oh. Racing Tour. <laughs> um, I've got a little got a little story about this one. Uh, back in 2000, I actually went to Disney World, and in Epcot, they've got like a section called Innovations where they have all like latest technology and all this kind of stuff. They actually had a Sega Dreamcast area with the big Sonic Adventure statue that was used at uh, E3, and most of the demo pods had this game on it. Oh, It's like, oh, latest technology. Oh, oh, look at these amazing Dreamcast games, and most of them had this on it. And I picked it up a few years ago maybe two years ago, something like that. And my God, this is probably one of the worst Mario Kart clones I've ever played. I was playing it again earlier, and it's just horrendous. Um, not even going into the gameplay straight away. I'll just go into the the character selection. Like, it's a Disney game. Why is it mostly made up characters? It's got Chippendale, Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, fair enough. And then you've got characters like Oliver Chickley the Third and Otto yeah. Plugnut and Mo Whiplash and like why why get the license <laughs> why get the Disney license and then just make a load of characters up and some of them look like bootleg versions of actual characters <laughs> so it yeah. makes you wonder why they bothered that's not even the worst of it could that be something to do with like you know how um, there was Mickey's Speedway on the N64 around the same roughly oh, around yeah, the same time like it could rare, be some... yeah yeah oh it could be yeah that might actually be a good point but like the game just is horrendous it does not play well at all it's like everything that people don't like about mario kart all the cheap weapons and stuff but like ramped up to 50 it's and it's just clunky the drifting feels awful like you just find yourself bumping into things all the time uh the graphics are just i mean there's a lot of ps1 ports on the dreamcast and a lot of them don't look that much different they're just smoother but this game's so blocky and wonky everything looks like it's tearing apart and the frame rate dips to like 10 half the time it's trying to, it's and... trying to rip itself apart and it seems <laughs> yeah, to put, yeah, it, put it's... itself out of its own misery no <laughs> and it's a terrible <laughs> advert for disney world as well because it looks like it looks so bad everything looks like it's made of cardboard yeah. like it does not sell the park at all in fact it would put you off going there because it makes you think it's it looks like you know there was um a chinese knockoff version of disney world like they actually made a fake park with like a big wonky castle <laughs> it looks like that it just looks like a horrible cheap knockoff of Disneyland. <laughs> yeah it's a, yeah yeah oh, great game yeah it looks like Disney land yeah that's what this may as well be it's a Disneyland game it's just a little story i've got about this game is a couple of months ago i had a lot of people around and we we got the dreamcast out to play four player oh you didn't put this on one of the games i was oh. looking for some four player racing games so we played a bit oh, of like no. v rally we played a bit of wacky races and then we played a bit of this and after oh about my God. literally about five minutes everyone was just like we could we didn't know where the track went no. everyone was just kind of banging into walls everyone was just like yeah this isn't fun. I can't even imagine what the frame rate's like in split screen. I can't even imagine because it, it can't even it struggles on one player. So I can't even imagine what split screen's like. It must be two frames per second. It was. Ter- <laughs> I mean, everyone had already had a few drinks. You know, I mean, it was good. Like everyone was having a good laugh, and then this has completely killed it. Everyone was just like, "No, I don't play this anymore. Turn it off." <laughs> <laughs> you sure, you don't want to be um, Tiara Damage or <laughs> Bruno Biggs, the obese Mickey Mouse fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i know there are probably worse there are definitely games that are worse than this but in terms of games that are a disappointment based on the brand because disney games at one point were really good mainly in like mega drive and snes era yeah but you just got it's like the ultimate cheap cash in in terms of like when you compare it to stuff like racky races and looney tunes space race and stuff like that it's just so cheap and nasty it's awful <laughs> i mm. hate it <laughs> I was getting angry with it earlier. I'll calm, well, calm I'll put it in just to down. confirm, and I was like, "Oh my god, I can't stand it! I can't even beat like the calm first down. few levels." <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, then. Let's uh, move on to Mike. What's your least favourite? Uh, I've got so many to choose from, Tom. So many to choose from. Um, but the winner by a, by a country <laughs> mile is Ducati World. It is oh, the most hey. horrendous piece of shit bing, bing, I've bing. ever played in my life. You can you can drive up walls. <laughs> that's it. I need to hear that. That's, yeah, it. that's the entire yeah. thing. Mike, can I just say you you it's, take yeah that's uh, you take my, yeah that's it's what what I was it's, it's, well. it's bloody some of the options look amazing. It's like Gran Turismo style sort of career mode, which seems really promising. And you get into the game, and it just fails at every single thing it tries to do. The st- everything. The graphics are terrible. Um, it makes Walt Disney World Magical Quest look like the greatest game ever made. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the kind of sound does, yeah. which just seems like it's made by people banging some kind of tin instrument. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's the sound of it. The tracks are terrible. The the textures look like they've just been drawn oh. by a four year old. There's there's no <laughs> quality control in the game at all. Um, I no. spent years and years defending the, the makers of the game, which I think is um, name actually, oh, what's it called? Um, Attention to Detail, which made Sydney 2000 as well. Oh, that's not Sydney I like either. Sydney, I like Sydney 2000. I always liked it. And I just played this game, and no, I, I hate them. There was an interesting comment somebody made on the Facebook group a few weeks yeah. ago about Ducati World. I've not actually tried this myself, but apparently in the game, if you activate the rear view, you know, you know, to yeah. look back at the track behind you. Even though the riders might be right behind you on the little map, they're not there uh, yeah. in the rear view. Oh, wouldn't surprise me. The game doesn't even render them. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> okay. It's just terrible. Right. The, the game has no... It doesn't make any sense. The game has no... It, if, if some of the career bits are in there, brilliant. Anyone who's got the patience to go through more than one race of that game and get to the rest of the career mode, they have my utmost respect because it is the most... It's fucking terrible. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a challenge. Right? It, yeah. They actually put that game on one of the official Dreamcast uh, demo discs on well, the magazine. Like one of the late issues that actually had that as one of the three or maybe four that's demos. Why on that disc. Fucking failed for them. To put people off. You know? yeah. like, that's the only. I haven't actually played the full game. I've only ever played that demo, and I was like, "Why would you put this on a disc? No one's going to buy this now that they've played it." Because like it didn't have any music either, so all you had was that farty noise that yeah. the bike makes, and just like falling over, fumbling about. It's like, why would you put this on a demo? There were so many bad games on demos. It was like it would put you off buying them. It's bad. Bad enough to be to be interesting to play. It's like yeah. you know, big rigs or whatever it's called, the PC game which is just broken. Oh, God, it's yeah. the kind of game which you have to experience yeah. at least once just to climb the fucking wall on your motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> once. <laughs> That's my memory. I I only ever played the demo, and this was like when I was probably fifteen years old, I guess. And at the time, I'd get a demo disc, and me and my yeah. mates we'd play them, and we'd play those demos to death, every single one. I can't remember like ever being ever thinking, oh, a game was so terrible. But when we turned on Ducati, like, we played one or two laps, and as we, like, as we slid towards the edge of the road, our bike started yeah. Yeah. going parallel, like, yeah. driving <laughs> parallel yeah. on the wall, and it went up the wall, and then back down the wall, and onto Jeez. the road again. And we were like, what? We were, like, laughing our asses, like, what is this crap? I can't believe we this that game. game Stun Runner, where you can, you can spin around the tunnels inside, like, uh, yeah. or F-Zero-X, yeah. you just kind of yeah. spin around. <laughs> Roll cage or something like that. It's like that, but, it, you know, it, it's not slope, so it's like a, it's like a mm. right angle, the road, and then a straight wall, and your bike you're like, your bike yeah. is like upright, upright, upright. Oh, yeah. now it's <laughs> a 90 degree angle. The riders fall off in comical fashions as well, if I remember rightly. Definitely. That was my favourite thing about the demo, which is making them yeah. crash over and over again. The what rider will just stand still whilst the motorbike drives off. I, I don't understand. The game's just, <laughs> the game's broke. To, to beat the other games that are terrible on Dreamcast, one's been mentioned already. There's a couple more, which I hope someone mentions. To be worse than those games takes an achievement i i I go hat off to the game and again it's got that big brand by it you know like they spent all the money brand brand and you think yeah and then like is that why we haven't had any other ducati games since or something there is one on ds actually ducati motos so um i don't know what that's like mind but uh... (laughs) it took them years to like go right should we actually dare to get someone (laughs) to make another game (laughs) hopefully they won't fuck it up this time 
I would say it couldn't be any worse, but I've played some pretty terrible games on DS, racing games on DS. What's interesting about Ducati World, though, is up, and, up to the um, up to the release, I remember, in fact, I've actually looked back through the magazines, and there are quite a oh, few yeah. magazines. The official Dreamcast magazine, um, Paragon Publishing's yep. Dreamcast magazine, oh, yeah. they have big features, and they also have developer interviews with the team. Bloody and hell. <laughs> they're, they're actually quite quite positive in the promotion of the game, even though it looks like shit in the screenshot. I don't think the reviews <laughs> were that bad either, were they? There's a couple of a couple of magazines gave them you know, sort of mid media reviews. Oh no, the, the, the review I looked at yesterday gave it like 30 something, said it was terrible, so Isn't that just sort of like games journalism in a nutshell though, when they've got the previews they're like, oh yeah, this will probably be alright honest, and then they get to the review and then they just slag it off well, Especially yeah. if you're an official magazine, you kind of ha- you, you really do have to sort of like not tread on people's toes until it yeah. gets the release. Yeah, exactly um, But yeah, oh, I actually definitely. have a copy of this and I've never played it so um, I'm totally playing it afterwards Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> Okay, brilliant choice. Uh, so that was your choice as well, wasn't it, Ross? It was my, my it was my choice, but I'll just mention um I, I played it for the first I don't know much about it, so I won't talk too long, but uh I played it for the first time today, pods two. Absolutely bloody awful. It looks like I was a debating bad over Saturn game. Uh, Walt Disney World and that. <laughs> it's so oh, dull. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely so dull. awful. Controls are terrible, yeah, just grey. It looks it, and it just look it doesn't look like a Dreamcast game. It looks like a, 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 a like a launch yeah. PS1 the same, game. The thing with Pod 2, I think terrible. the main gimmick was that it was it was online racing. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean mm. online racing doesn't have to be bad. I mean look at Toy yeah. Racer, that was alright. The, ha- the handling feels like it's deliberately made to counter lag. Same as yeah. same as Speed Devils, the online version of that. Where they also they Ah, do they change it? If you love Speed Devils, mm. don't play online because it's just terrible. As in, don't play oh, the online okay. version. I didn't realise they changed so much. <laughs> there is a, there are, there's a lot of differences between Speed Devils and Speed Devils Online. Um, there's loads of like random things as well. Like uh, they've taken out like all the real time right, yeah. headlights yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, oh, really? that probably wouldn't um, be. You know, obviously over a 33k modem in yeah. the UK anyway, playing hmm. a, a game, a, a racing game at night with, you know, five other people with real time headlights probably would have been a yeah. bit of a struggle. But in the one player mode, I, I can't see why they would have removed it. Anyway, that's uh, another, <laughs> another story. Yeah, so uh, Pod, Pod, uh, Pod is yeah, uh, Pod's yeah. horrendous. <laughs> so I, I didn't even finish the, I, I didn't even no. finish the lap, I don't think. Yeah, I think I got through one race awful. and that was about it. And I was like, why do I own this? Why do I actually own this? Uh, yeah, it's going to end up. Because we're sad, it's going, compulsive Dreamcast collectors. Isn't there like loads of content locked off unless you play it online? Yeah. Yes, yeah. there's a whole track that you can't play unless you sign up to their yeah. servers. So that's the weird, gone. The weird thing <laughs> yeah, pod, completely it, it gone. Was all, it was original. The original pod was designed to be sold with graphics cards to show off the sort of potential of graphics cards on a PC. Yeah, on PC, some, yeah. Was it Voodoo or something like that? I think it was, it was Voodoo. Voodoo, yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, my, I'm confusing it with Roll Cage. I thought Roll Cage. No, Roll Cage was... is fantastic. Roll Cage is brilliant. I thought Roll was Pod as well. Also sold as. I oh, there was a Roll... few because Ultimate Ultimate Race Pro was as well. Wasn't Screamer? Scr- we're going back now. It wasn't Screamer. Oh, I love again. Screamer. <laughs> <laughs> Screamer. Oh, oh, card as well. Hey, we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Always racing games. Always <laughs> racing games. They're good tech demos the when they're cards. not terrible games. <laughs> Racing special. Yeah, the, the 90s uh, graphics yeah. card special. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's move on. I'll just give you a, a little bit of a spiel on my least favourite. It was quite tough, no. this, but yeah. I've gone for my old favourite, Exhibition of Speed. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that. Right, I was going to pick this up. <laughs> what a disgusting game. Utterly, utterly disgusting. <laughs> I think yep. the, be- the, the, the best thing that I've ever seen with this game involved in- with it was I went to an event in Oxford about two years ago called ROM, mm-hmm. and um, I was with a guy, I was talking to a guy who'd never, he'd, he'd never played a Dreamcast before, and the game that he was playing was Exhibition of Speed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He was like, "This is rub- this is rubbish." Like, you know, as I like, mate, honestly, don't base the- your thoughts on the Dreamcast on this game. Literally, no. no. The I-, I can't explain how bad this game is. The where do I start? The graphics uh, are ridiculously bad. Um, the frame rate just like it, it-, it randomly slows to a crawl for yeah. no reason. Hmm. I remember your video about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It they, just they, sort of like slows down and speeds back up again. It's exactly, weird. yeah. Uh, the AI is just like really, <laughs> really thick. It just like bunches up in corners like all, all <laughs> the cars will bunch up in a corner because they can't reverse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, Oh, I don't. I really don't know where to begin. It's the most unwanted sequel of all time on Dreamcast. Yeah, because it is obviously the the sequel to Roadsters. Roadsters, which mm. is also terrible. 
Yeah, as well as that, there's like loads of like re- weird, like random, like almost casual racism thrown in. Like you've yeah. got what? characters, like you've got like a French guy who's got like a, a beret and a, and a baguette and like oh, an Eiffel yeah, Tower yeah, in the yeah, background, yeah. and yeah. then you've got an American guy who's a cowboy. You know, obviously, I got to be a cowboy. The English guy is like an old man with a like a flat cap, and, and it's just like, why? Are you, why? Why do you have to choose? We tried characters? to give it character. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just I, yeah. I don't want to dwell on it for too long because it's actually depressing me. But it, if you want to play a bad game, it's mm. exhibition of speed. It's a pal. It's a pal only exclusive as well. Funny that. Um, yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. So those are the games that you should probably avoid. Oh, in fact, no. If you if you want to play them just for you know morbid curiosity, then please do because some of them are quite hilarious. Obviously, just Chatty burn Will. them or something. Yeah, yeah. Don't but, bother um, actually buying a copy. Yeah, the other ones that I was looking at. I actually uh, do kind of want to try uh, this one now. Yeah, please do. <laughs> just to see how awful it is. The other ones I want to give a, a, a sort of a, a mention to that uh, I find are horrific examples of Dreamcast racing games are, again, which uh, you chose, Lewis, uh, Spirit of Speed. Uh, uh, we've also got Roads, as we've mentioned, but uh, there's one called Jeremy, Jeremy McGrath <laughs> Supercross 2000. <laughs> yeah. Which is, oh, oh, it, it was touch and go, it was touch and go <laughs> between that and the exhibition of speed for... And Test Drive? Oh, no. I've never played yeah. Test Drive 6, but I've heard it's bad. I'd put it's Test Drive played as a day for the first time. Yeah, yeah, I heard that in there as well. The thing with awful. Jeremy McGrath, though, it's just this has got really, really bad frame rate. If the frame rate was better, it'd be a good game. Uh, I don't know about I that, th- mate. <laughs> I, don't know. Uh, I played that game a lot. Have you ever <laughs> seen the uh, Game Boy Color port of Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000? Um, yes. It, it's no. pre-rendered. So you're on a pre-rendered yeah. track what? that moves around. And, yeah, yeah, the Game yeah. Boy. on the Game Boy Color <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, it's quite boy. bizarrely, like interesting in its in a weird way but i don't know if it's yeah. actually a good game there was a lot of strange yeah. stuff like that on the game boy wasn't there like very yeah. tech demo like... that sounds really interesting i'm gonna have a look yeah, at that honestly like have a look at some footage on youtube it's quite interesting cool yeah. okay right guys let's move on to our our final section of the podcast We've looked at our, our honourable mentions. We've looked at the utter crap <laughs> of the genre. But after we come back from this break, we will talk about the very pinnacle, or, or the pinnacles even, of the Dreamcast racing genre. Welcome back to episode 36 of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. We're talking about racing games as the last hour or so has uh, probably hinted at. We're now going to talk about our favourite racing games, the ones that represent you know, the very upper echelons of the, of the genre on the Dreamcast. And I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to come straight to you, Lewis. What is your favourite racing game on the Dreamcast? Rush Rush Rally Racing. Oh, I absolutely wow. adore Rush Rush awesome. Rally Racing. Um, so I'm I'm a big fan of the Micro Machine series. Uh, yeah. So it's, yes. it's it's an obvious comparison because it is a top down racing game. Yeah. Um, but what it yeah. really reminds me of, which I'm also a really big fan of, is uh, Neo Drift Out on Neo Geo. Yes. Oh, really yeah. Oh yeah. It's got a very similar handling oh, that's model. A good it's got one, that yeah. lovely sort of like you can wheel yeah. the tail out, and it's got a lovely drift to it. It feels really nice. Um, uh, but it's it's very like the handling model's really tight as well. It's it's actually quite um for for an off road racer, um it does a really good job. And there's lots of humour to it as well with all the cows and stuff. I really love all that daftness. <laughs> um it's it's just a really good time. Um it's it's one of those it's one of the very few sort of independently released Streamcast games that breaks the mold a little bit as well because we're obviously we're flooded yeah. with so many shoot 'em ups and um, uh, RPGs now seem to be quite heavy with the with the system because we've got Legion Shadows coming out and obviously we've had uh, PS Solar and things. It's it's just nice to have something that's a little bit just different um and i think they they must have really worked really hard on that on that handling model because it is so satisfying to play and yeah it's it's one of those things that really blew me away i didn't expect much of it yeah, from a two dimensional game you know it's a lot of the independent games are like that and they are quite limiting in a, in a, in a weird way but at the same time this felt like there's just a lot going for it. It's there's a really in depth career mode. It really feels like it really feels like a Dreamcast yeah, definitely, game. Definitely. Like it's got Dreamcast all over it, even though it's like two D and that. It's just everything about the gameplay really feels like some of the 
a lot of the arcade stuff that's absolutely on the i think it's a real like disappointment that it's kind of limited to this system and WiiWare. like it feels like it should have been a bigger hit it should be on steam and stuff and oh definitely it's, it's, lots more people yeah should be playing exactly it. they should try and bring mm, that absolutely. back <laughs> i've i've never actually played it but after listening to your description of the handling mode like, i'm i'm really tempted to try and get hold of it oh absolutely you really should it's such a it's such a good game i'm a big fan of like top-down rally games i've got a game called power drive rally on the atari jaguar which um yeah oh, like power drive on mega drive which I'm not entirely sure it's the same game or yes. not, but like, um, yeah, it is. really fun I think game. It is, yeah. Yeah. It is, I think yeah. the Jaguar game is like a sort of a semi sequel with slightly yeah, different yeah. tracks and things. If you like that, you'll like Rush Rush Rally Racing, honestly. It's Excellent. Oh, maybe we should request that Dragon Box find yeah. a way to re release it. <laughs> mm. I still haven't had a chance to play uh, Rush Rush Rally Racing yet either because about one year ago, over a year ago, I ordered Rush Rush Rally Racing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Goat Store, they had four yeah, yeah, independent yeah. Fury games. and I ordered like those yeah. four. And something else, and yeah, Feet of Fury, and uh, yeah, there's some like cool herding herders. game herders, or oh, cool herders, cool herders. <laughs> and a couple of couple of us, and I ordered all those oh, right, and okay. Slave at the ah. same time, and I I thought I was gonna get <laughs> the, the games I ordered, and then later when Slave <laughs> oh, got released, no. which was, been was apparently a month away from because release. of the pre-order. Oh, yeah, so so man. they emailed me. They they emailed me and said, "Oh, you've only paid." Uh, one lot of postage so would you like to pay extra postage um, for Slave on its own or would you just like us to send them all together when we release Slave in a month or, or two's time or two. and I was like oh yeah I can <laughs> wait a month I know and it, it's like over a year later now and I did message them about a month or two ago to say look I'm not complaining or anything I'm happy hmm. to wait for Slave but I'd rather have these games yeah. now oh that's and they never no, they really replied to me they're really bad at replying I've tried to change my address they, they never replied to me and they never replied to me which I was like I've already paid mm. for these games and they, they're just ignoring me and then I didn't I completely forgot about it so I, I mess. I did email them like a month or two ago and then today we're doing the racing uh, podcast and I looked at Rush Rush Rally Racing online and I remembered oh yeah they still haven't got back to me about that, so I emailed them again. Oh, I hope and, they come um, through for you, Mal. No reply, hmm. yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. If you're listening to this goat store, yeah. email Ross. Yeah, sort your shit out. Email him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Figure out. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so Rush Rush Rally Racing. Good choice. Let's move on yeah. to Aaron. What's your favourite? Crazy Taxi. <laughs> I know. It's a game, <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> it's not dry. It's not driving. It's traveling. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I was obsessed with this game when it came out. This is one of probably one of the far, top five games that I played the most on the Dreamcast. Like absolutely addicted to it when it first came out. Like got obsessed with it for a while. In fact. This is one of the few games that I've ever played so much on the Dreamcast that the analog stick actually gave me blisters on my wow. thumb. <laughs> yeah, like I was playing it every day after school, after high school, like for the, about two months straight. It's such like <laughs> it's, it's such a product game. of its time. Mm. I love how like it's, it really it's is, so, yeah. it so encapsulates like two thousand era like yep. stuff with all the brand deals and the soundtrack mm. and the offspring and things on it. It's just like you couldn't you yeah. couldn't make that game now. It's it's so like no. it, it's <laughs> they tried on phones but it didn't work. <laughs> I wonder how many people like became offspring fans after playing Sega. I think like, yeah, I, I think a lot of people did. Yeah, and I kind religion. of did at the time. I was definitely, that definitely got me in. Yeah, that definitely got me into those bands. I'd say at the time, but yeah. Um, learn it kind of like the same thing I had with Sonic R when that came out. I just got obsessed with learning the layouts. And like learning where everything is and just exploring because obviously you've got like the 10 minute mode in Crazy Taxi. So I just use that to memorize where everything is and like just try and find the best routes and all this kind of stuff. And I got to this point where I was playing it and I was just picking up the same people in the same area for about an hour on like the arcade rule. I could play it for like an hour and a half before the time runs out because I remembered where everyone went. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's a testament to how well designed it is because I can. I'm thinking about it now, and well I can actually. Designed. I can it's... think of the layout of like the first level where you you start off and then you go around that little sort of left hand turn and then you go down and then yeah. down again. I'd almost and then argue that, that <laughs> yeah. initial that initial arcade level. I, I'd still argue that's the only good Crazy Taxi level because the one they added to it mm. had problems where the arrow would get stuck between the buildings crazy taxi 2's levels were uh, a bit i mean the jumping helped in that one but yeah. again is it a big apple yeah. or but, like that first that first original arcade versions level 
is the perfect crazy taxi level. Everything after that feels like an afterthought, if that makes any sense. There's lots but... of hidden stuff as well that you don't mm. actually see unless you like kind of go to the right or left when you first start, like tennis courts yeah. and that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't didn't you feel like um like it took it took me quite a while to realise that it's just a it's just a like a course. It's just a yeah, loop. yeah. It does all but go round. It took me like a good yeah. few hours of playing. Yeah, it I comes back round. Yeah. And when I when I went round, well, I think it took me round until, until I got good enough to actually manage to get all the way through it. And I was like, oh, I'm back. It here took again. me. It's just a loop. It probably oh, took right. me a month to even find that because I was just using a set mm. route and I was just going back and forth between like the church and the baseball court and then the baseball court back to uh, Pizza Hut or whatever it was. I was just using that route, and at, I think I got to the point where I just picked up. Everyone in that area, every green and yellow, and you know, like all the shorter ones, and then I'd move on to the city. It's like an illusion, and like an illusion of freedom, which is not yeah. really. Yeah, it true. really isn't. You find yourself going back and forth to the same two buildings over and over and over and over and over again, just to keep that score going up. Mm. And I remember I actually had some techniques in the game that would get me like ridiculous money, like where um, Pete, I think it was Pizza Hut or one of the other restaurants, you could actually drift into it and sort of like lean to the side onto the building and you could hang it there and just get tons of money yeah and and just as it's just before it goes under like speedy mode you could just drop it down you could like let go of when you want to drop it and oh there's just so many i can't play this game on any other console either the way i have have it the way i do the like the uh drifting and the boosting on the drink cards it's like a very specific Hands, it's like a um, muscle uh, memory around the control. Like muscle yeah. memory, yeah. If I yeah, try, to... I can't do it on the arcade machine. I can't yeah, do it. Yeah, I've, I've played it in the arcades. And I'm terrible at it there. But if I play it on the drink cards, it's like second, yeah, na- second nature. And if I try to play it on like PS2 or GameCube or any of the other consoles it came out on, it's just not the same because I can't do the. <laughs> it's like I'm squeezing the controller every time I like do the crazy boost and stuff. It's yeah. a very specific. Yeah, because you've got the crazy boost and then you've got the limit, the limit, no the yeah, limit yeah, boost yeah. or something. So you got the crazy boost that, but yeah, you got the crazy boost, which is like you press drive and accelerate mm. at the same time. And you yeah. get a little boost. And then when you're at the height of that boost, if you press that's reverse oh, drive no, that, that and accelerate is, at the same that is time, my thing. then that you is get my an extra thing. boost. Yeah, that's my grippy thing. And yeah, on the on the arcade version, I couldn't do I couldn't do either of those. So boosts. much harder. And I, I was trying over and over again, like with different timings. And I was like, yeah. well, how's this? Work? Yeah, I can't do it at all. Yeah, that specific version on that with the, that specific controller, I can't play it with a race wheel or anything like that. It has to be that exact setup, <laughs> otherwise it doesn't feel right. <laughs> awesome, yeah, awesome game. And very, like, as as uh, Louis said, very much a product of its time, and also absolutely a game that really does kind of well. When I think back to that point of my life, it just kind of encapsulates everything everything about it. Really encapsulates everything I love mm. about the Dreamcast as well. This yeah. Virtua Tennis Soul Calibur. And a couple other games were like the big. Was it Blue, obsessions. Blue, Blue Skies in Games, the uh, old yeah, UK yeah. Resistance oh, uh, campaign? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was those, those were the games that I was. Them three games in particular were the ones that I just was hooked on for months. Mm. Like, they were probably my biggest drink ass plays in general. <laughs> brilliant. Okay, brilliant choice. Let's uh, let's move on to Mike. Mike, your favourite game, please? Uh, favourite game is Le Mans 24 Hour. <laughs> <laughs> By a mile, mm. yeah, by cool. an absolute mile. Um, by twenty-four miles, yeah. by twenty well, <laughs> twenty-four <laughs> hours, technically. But I, know, I, I see what you're getting at. Um, no, it's, it's an amazing game. Just everything about it is amazing. It's the closest to um, the, like I said before, the Code Masters racing games, um, which have come out since, which are still my favorite games of all time. Um, I've completed all of them. And I've completed them on. Uh, yeah, amazing game. Is that, is that it? Is an amazing game? <laughs> well, well, where, how much more do you want to say? I can say, I can say I can talk for hours about it. Uh, the graphics are amazing for the Dreamcast. Um, the in-car view, well, it's not actually in-car as such, but uh, bonnet view the is... bonnet uh, cam, yeah. Yeah, superb, uh, superb. It seems to be just a perfect uh, position. Just, just kind of reiterating everything that we said in the in the previous yeah. kind of... The, I, th- I love the fact that it's, it's, it's... I like my racing games to be based on, on the sport. Of, ra- of racing, so like sort of proper motorsports style games, and I think this is probably the only one on the Dreamcast apart from the F1 games which does it properly. So uh, the only no... thing, sorry, no, go on. I was gonna say the only thing that uh, kind of disappoints me slightly is the fact that there's no damage damage model, you know, yeah, real time. But so. you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean that doesn't that doesn't detract from the game. It doesn't detract from <laughs> it didn't detract from uh, Gran Turismo in any way, so it doesn't really detract. Yeah, from, exactly. Uh, from... No, yeah. I think I think again, it's it's the I, I see where you're getting. I see where you're getting at. Um, it is certainly an issue um, in terms of 
for something so realistic or probably the only sort of game which tries to go for the whole simulation side of things to not have damage is a bit disappointing but you know I think it took a while for those kind of games, those kind of arcade sim games to catch on with really good damage modelling. So I think I'd, I'd rather have no damage in than, than sort of a subpar damage. Yeah, I tell you what, that game upscales incredibly well. Like, I play it on my Frame yeah. Meister and it really blew me away mm. the first time I played it. Like, it, it looks yeah. like a generation yeah. ahead I think I've of seen, is it piece... um, other yeah. games so on the Dreamcast almost. Does, it, does all those up, upscale yeah, yeah. games? Yeah. 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 Man, it looks amazing, Le Mans. It's, it's just so... And compare it to the, the PS2 version, I think came out afterwards, and I think the PS1 version and PC version came out before. It mm. was completely different games, utterly yeah. different games. I mean, it looks really, mm. really, really nice on a VGA monitor as well. It looks yeah. stunning. In fact, yeah. it's also one of those games I actually discovered recently that if you play it on a different, you know, console from a different region, it also has the uh, the double double use kind of um, like naming convention. So if you, <laughs> yeah, if you play right. the PAL yeah. version in the American Dreamcast, it comes up as Test Drive Le Mans. Yeah, I've got the American oh, version cool. of the. I've got the American version of the game, and when I tried it on my PAL system, yeah, it came up as just Demand twenty four hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, <laughs> excellent game, excellent game, excellent choice, Mike. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on, Ross, uh, let's talk about your favorite racing game on the Dreamcast. Yes, yeah, so I I could have picked Le Mans, I could have picked MSR um, or Sega Rally or Daytona, but I think all of those games um, they've been done better on other systems like MSR, like the Project Gotham games and other mm. other series have done it better. Sega Rally, I think the original is still the best one. Same with Daytona. Um and the port the port the port on the three sixty is far better yeah. than the one on Dreamcast. But the the one game that um I'm not even just talking about ports of the game, but I don't think they've ever made well it's it's very unique and they've never made another game uh, with this kind of feeling and like this, and that game is Crazy Taxi. Oh, hey. excellent! Cool. So two, two for Crazy Taxi. Yeah, it still lives up like really well. Like now, I, I can't. There's not really much point in going like it, from my perspective, like my way of thinking. Like I wouldn't really go and back and play MSR because there are better games I can play now, modern games. But Crazy Taxi, there's never been anything like it again, and it's just like. Fun. Probably never will be. Great to be game. And, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think a lot of people may have like a bit of an issue with the fact that it's not really a racing game. But <laughs> well, you're racing the clock. You yeah, you are racing the clock. You're in a car. Yeah. <laughs> you're racing from A to B. <laughs> you're racing against the clock. Um, and yeah, uh, well, that's well. <laughs> well, I mean, that, 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 <laughs> that's what Outrun is. You know, you're driving against the clock. So there's crazy tactics. Yeah. Very similar mechanic. So. Yeah, that's that's a driving yeah, yeah. game. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> same, same as Sega Rally, really. I mean. Sega yeah, Rally, you're absolutely. not really racing against the cars. They're just there as yeah, like place exactly. markers. They're, they're not really racing you. And also, that's another game. We were mentioning casual racism. I didn't realise at the time, but I played it today. And like it made me cringe in a few places. Like I picked... <laughs> I said, pick a pick a car and drive up. I was like, BD Joe. <laughs> yeah, we gonna have some fun. And I was like, oh my god! And then later on, I picked he's up this. He's like, actually my tri- main pick in that game. I always <laughs> pick him. I think he's the fastest, isn't he? But he's slightly less control. Yeah, and he's not a creepy on, like, old man like that other oh, guy. Gus. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Gus. <laughs> Get in the back of my car. <laughs> it's two a.m. It's two a.m. and the clubs are throwing out. Gus is there pulling up. Hey, ladies. <laughs> 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 Creepy bastard! <laughs> oh, we Later on, I picked shit. up this this African American woman, and she was pregnant. There's a there's pregnant characters in the game, and I picked her up, and she goes, "Hey, honey, can you take me to Kentucky Fried Chicken?" <laughs> Step on it, and I was like, "Oh!" No. <laughs> and then I got in the car, and like I crashed. And she was like, oh, you almost killed me. And Axel goes, shut up and let's drive. Like, yeah. oh, Axel, she's pregnant. But like, calm down. You're a big Axel. I don't want to play as you anymore. You're a dick. <laughs> shut up and move your butt. I must say, Ross, that was a fantastic impression of a strong independent black woman. <laughs> no, that, that's my impression of the the stereotype in Crazy Axel. Go and play. Brilliant. Nice impression. Fantastic. Okay, um... I'll uh, I'll finish this off now with my choice. Uh, I, I will say that I was expecting at least somebody to pick something like MSI, you know, the old fail safes or um, you know, Vanishing Point. There's, there's so many good racing games on the Dreamcast. It's hard to like choose choose one. Uh, obviously, we've done that it's now, true. but um, I'm guessing a lot of people would have expected us to pick like you know Daytona's and the, the MSRs of the uh, of the world. I'm also not going to pick one of those two. Uh, my favorite racing game on the Dreamcast is Rush 2049. 
Ah, and it's not just oh, my yeah, favorite. It. It's not just my favorite racing game. It's one of my top five Dreamcast yep. games. I absolutely oh, okay. love Rush Twenty Forty Nine, and I can't actually really put a, a, a reason on that. Um, just going back a few years before I had the Dreamcast, um, I was a big fan of San Francisco Rush on the N sixty four and mm. Rush Two Extreme Racing USA. And even though they are generally seen as bad games by like the general gaming press. At the time, it was they, they were the, the time that I had both of those games for my N sixty four. They were like maybe like one of three games that I had, so I played them to death, and I just became mm. really big a big fan of the series. And then when Rush twenty forty nine came to the Dreamcast, I, I need to get that, and it didn't disappoint. You know, it's a, it's an upgrade in every way possible. Better graphics, you know, new tracks, uh, just the kind of weird. Sort of wings, few, yeah, wings. You know, few, wings. Few, the, Cars with wings. The sort of weird, sort of uh, st- best idea ever. <laughs> the weird, stylized, futuristic setting of the of the tracks. You know, um, I'm a big fan of things like 2000 AD. You know, and that kind of like weird look at f- the future. And it's always this dark and like foreboding. Uh, you know, um, dystopia, horrible yeah. world, dystopia. That's the word <laughs> I was looking for. Thank you. Whereas in Rush 2049, it's kind of like the Civic Council of San Francisco has gone. We're not going to go down that route. We're going to make this nice, clean, you know, almost kind of uh, utopian yep. uh, city to live in. And now you're going to race around it. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Slim Jim commercials everywhere. Yeah, Slim Jim. And is it Doritos or something as well? It's like... Like some like of weird, like... Um, I remember. Dickie's, weird Dickie's cars. Dick, uh, sorry, Dickie's um, clothing. He's advertised everywhere. So uh, at yeah, least yeah. in 2049, you can still buy Dickie's uh, shirts <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> and Slim Jim. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think as well, it's the fact that it's got this really kind of cool um, like a championship mode where you don't have to come in the top three to progress. If you come last, if you have a shocker and come last, you still like get maybe a point, but you can carry on to the next race. And so you get these kind of like scraps, like these mid-table scraps, you know, who's going to come next? You know, who's going to come first in the next race? And, you know, the battle for the championship is on now because, you know, I've lost that race, but I could possibly win the next one. And oh, mm. I, I just, I love it. You know, I, I love the, it's not a perfect game by any means, but it just means a lot to me, you know, personally. So, yeah. I absolutely love the stunt mode in that. Mm. Going back to demos, I, I must have played the stunt mode on the demo disc. Yeah. For hours on end, it's so fun. Just to get that <laughs> just, many flips in the end and land it. And yeah, then, yeah, and actually manage to land it and not like land and then rotate over and explode. <laughs> yeah. Like it would happen almost every time. It's like, oh, I got it, I got it. Nope. <laughs> Weirdly, this is also another game that's really good with the race wheel, you know, from the internal cockpit. Oh, view. okay. It's very, I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely worth playing from the uh, internal view with the, the racing wheel. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no like real cars and all the tracks obviously like, fabrications of real world locations in San Francisco um, hmm. or not but <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just like a really bright you know vibrant really good looking game and yeah I'm just I'm just a fan is that Mike or Ross have you played this I've never played it that's the second game that and Rush Rush Rally the second game that's come up today that I've never played and I thought you I should played, get on I those thought I played both all great. The classics I didn't even realize that I thought I was like I didn't realize that was known as a decent game I, I thought it was just like you know, like a port or something from PC or PS1. I didn't realise it was a good game. On that, no, it's quite interesting that the um, the, the I think the, the the game that's on the Xbox, which is the, the the game that's on Midway Arcade Treasures Three, I think it is, is based on the Dreamcast version. Yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, the way I've played this the most, actually. So yeah, what was that? Sorry, does it what have that? all the content? Mid- though? Sorry, what was that? Was that? Uh, this, uh, the, the Midway Arcade Treasures version is actually the way I played. Uh, uh, Francis. San Francisco Rush 2049 the most actually um, it's mm. pretty um, I mean I've only played the demo of the Dreamcast version um, but it, to, mm. to be honest with you they feel almost identical um, there might be yeah. there might be a little bit of a frame rate drop on the PS2 version just just because there's so many games on the same disc I think um, but at the same time mm. like, yeah it's, it's pretty close and yeah really fun game I, I totally agree with you like your pick um, I, I you know it's, it is a really fun arcade racing game and it's just unique as well it's trying, trying things that that are very yeah. unique to it, and that have never been done in a similar way. And yeah, it's um, it's uh, just going back to what you said there about the frame rate. I mean, the Dreamcast version does suffer from a few frame rate issues when you try to turn, which sounds really bad, but it's not that <laughs> noticeable to be honest. Um, and there's also another thing that I really like about it, and that's the headlight effect. It's not a true real time lighting effect, but it's kind of like a drawn yeah. effect. All right, and it's hard to explain, but 
if you play it, if you drive up to a building, these kind of sprites appear on the building and they mimic oh, yeah, 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 yeah. they mimic how headlights look when you actually do drive up to a building and it kind of grows this effect and as you back away, it kind mm. of shrinks again. It's really weird and unique, but definitely one to check out because it just looks so mm. odd, but also quite effective. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, a, it's another that didn't get a release in Japan, though. I, um, I think racing, yeah. the genre of racing games is definitely the one that um, Japan like loses to... PAL and North America regions. I was looking at the list today and there were like 20. There's 20 games in that list that never came out. In MSR Japan. didn't come out in Japan. No. Did it? MSR a lot of those games in that list didn't. didn't. Yeah. Trickstar and Spirit didn't. of Speed did. So. <laughs> yeah. on, on, on the note of um, MSR not coming out in Japan, when I went to see my uh, air quotes contact about those uh, unreleased Dreamcast games like um, Take the Bullet, for example, he, he mm. actually has the Japanese yeah. version of MSR oh, wow. on a GD ROM. Mm. Uh, so the really? game was finished, but wow. it, just, it was just never released. It's just never bothered. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Weird. Yeah, because obviously, I mean, they 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 had they had what today they had Tokyo, London, and mm. San, Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco, again. San Francisco <laughs> again. Yeah. So they obviously like plan. They chose those three places to represent yeah. each of the main regions, I guess. But yeah, yeah. and they even had mm. they had Japanese radio, yeah. didn't they? And I yeah. think yeah, they did. It the was game, only yeah. Japanese with like voices. So that, they went to a lot yeah. of effort. God, God knows why yeah. it never came out. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Very odd. Anyway, guys, I think that kind of wraps it up. We've we've actually gone through quite a few different Dreamcast games there. Um, obviously, if there's any that we missed, then please, you know, comment on the podcast or let us know on Facebook or on the main blog where this will be going up. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for us this episode. Just remains for me to say thank you to my usual co-hosts, uh, Mike, Aaron and Ross, and also a massive thanks to Lewis oh, well. for joining us. It's been, no a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. I really, yeah, It's been nice. It's been lovely. Before we go, I'm just going to do a few uh, little bits of housekeeping. I want to draw attention to the fact that we've got a Patreon and we've got quite a few people who are supporting the podcast and the site. And I just wanted to give those people a bit of a shout out uh, before we uh, we go, because obviously it's nice that they you know contribute to the upkeep of the podcast and all that kind of thing. So, so yeah, I just wanted to give a massive shout out to all the people who've supported us on Patreon. And the list goes like this. From the bottom up, we've got John Thompson, Alex Hirsch, Brandon Aaron, Jason Cathers, Alexander Padilla, uh, Chris Unwin, Garrett Otto, Spencer Johnson, DCGX, Dan Patton, Sean Robinson, James Steele, Tristan Brown, Matthew Smith, Dave Baldwin, Ben Lancaster, Daniel Turner, and Adam Lundgren. On the last person, Adam, I did a, an interview with him on his Swedish Dreamcast site, which is dreamcast.se. Go and check that out if you can read Swedish. Uh, it was really interesting doing an interview in another language. I didn't actually speak wow. Swedish to him. He just kind of trans. Oh, you, know, you didn't. Trans- <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I, was, I was really shocked. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can barely speak English. Like, oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks to all those people who support us on Patreon. Um, we can be found on Twitter at the DC Junkyard. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com, the Dreamcast Junkyard, and groups the Dreamcast Junkyard, and also the main blog, which is www.dreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. You can find Lewis on Twitter at... Uh, Sonic Yoda for me personally, but if you want to follow Sega Driven, then that is at Sega Driven, uh, facebook.com forward slash Sega Driven, and also the website, www.segadriven.com. Excellent. Like a true professional. There you go. Rip, there you rip, go. No. <laughs> um, and if you want to check out music stuff, then it's ukscumscene.wordpress.com. Excellent. You should also plug pack. I should. I should, shouldn't I? I keep forgetting. I do that. Um, so yeah, I started a little um, YouTube uh, channel just for shits and giggles. It's all about Pac-Man clones. Uh, it's called Pac Manufactured, and uh, unfortunately, I haven't got a URL for that. So you'll just have to search for Pac Manufactured on YouTube. Yes, uh, I will say that I've watched several of your videos, and I found it very interesting looking at all the different Pac-Man clones through the uh, through yeah, the no, years. Yeah, no, it's a good bit very of fun. Interesting good stuff. Bit of fun. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, uh, you can find all the rest of us at our various destinations online. You can find Aaron on Twitter and on YouTube. Aaron, if you'd like to tell the listeners where you can be found. I can be found at the Gagger Man and also at Lucky Hit Series and on YouTube at Lucky Hit Series. And Mike? At Space underscore Turnip. And as ever, at the Dreamcast Junkyard main blog. And you can find Ross uh, skulking yeah, around. I'd actually, I, I, yeah, I'd actually... I'd like to... I'd, usually I'd... I don't say anything, but I'd, I'd like to give a shout out to a, another group I'm admin of. It's called R84 Retro Revival. Um, it's a small group, only maybe shy of 500 members. 
but uh, there's a lot of knowledgeable people in there about games, modding, uh, all sorts really, and it's a good group. Like not not many like arguments and bickering and stupid memes and stuff like that. Just a really interesting group. So <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to check it out, R84 Retro Revival, and that's on Facebook, yeah. Facebook, yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. And you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Tom Lee C. And yeah, that'll do for this particular episode. Uh, if you like what you've heard, please leave us a review on iTunes because it really helps us uh, get you know some awareness around the podcast. But yeah, once again, thanks to my co-hosts and thank you to you for listening. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hello. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Three, two, one. Go, go, go. Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now.